In this screencast, we're going to derive a first-order transfer function. So to begin with, we're going to start by considering a first-order, linear, non-homogeneous, ordinary differential equation, as shown here. Now I say here that this is an ordinary differential equation for a process. But it doesn't have to be a for a process. It can be for any system that is described by a first order, linear, non-homogeneous, ordinary differential equation. At any rate, this differential equation that I've shown here is in standard form. And it is important that the initial condition is equal to zero. I've also showed that the input function, u of t, is equal to 1 for t greater than 0. Now, it might have been equal to 0 for t less than 0 or for something else, but this actually is not important. And I'll show you why in just a little bit. At any rate, what we're the first thing we're going to do with this is we're going to take the Laplace transform of this equation. So if we take the Laplace transform of the equation, the first thing that gets Laplace transformed is the derivative. So you have tau p times the Laplace transform of the derivative, which would be s times capital Y of s minus the initial condition little y of zero. Now that's why it's important that the initial condition y of zero is equal to zero because now we can just cross this off. Plus the Laplace transform of y which is capital Y of S, equal to KP times the Laplace transform of U of T, which is capital U of S. Now what we're going to do is we're going to solve for Y of S, and so what we get is we get tau P S plus 1 quantity times Y of S is equal to KP times U of S, or finally Y of S is equal to kp over tau p s plus 1 times u of s. And what we've done here is that this fraction right here, this ratio between kp and tau p s plus 1, this is our transfer function. Which, because it's a process, is denoted by g sub p of s. So a transfer function, quote, transfers the dynamics of the input, in this case u of s, to the output, in this case y of s. So y of s is equal to g process of s times u of s, where again this p stands for process. But like I said before, you could do this sort of Laplace transform and manipulation for any first order differential equation that's not describing a process. Let's say you have a first order differential equation that describes a sensor. And the output, sorry, the transfer function will look the same, but instead of kp, you'll have k sensor. And instead of tau p, you'll have tau sensor in your transfer function. At any rate, so you have, therefore, the transfer function GP of S is defined as capital Y of S divided by U of S, where Y of S is the input, and U of S, oops, I have that backwards, Y of S is the output, and U of S is the input. Now, like I mentioned, transfer functions are usually denoted with this letter G. They're the ratio between the Laplace transform for a process output and the Laplace transform for a process input. And like I said, instead, it doesn't have to be for a process. It could be a transfer function for the sensor or for the actuator. So you, you could have transfer functions between any two variables. In this formulation, the Laplace transforms have to be variables of deviation form. And so that's why it was important, again, back at the beginning, for this initial condition, y of 0, to be equal to 0.